in order to actually submit the charge which we fetched here right which we validated on the um, front end I go to my product controller and I will create a new function which I'll name public function post checkout keep in mind this is the action I'm referring to in the routes file post checkout here and this post checkout method here will actually take a request or the request being injected into it since it is a post route and with that I can now handle the request which will have this hidden stripe token sent with it keep that in mind to actually make a charge for this I will first again check if we do have a shopping cart just a security check at the very beginning and kind the user got to this route on any other strange way if we do have all that I don't want to return a view though I want to return a redirect redirect to a route named shop shopping cart I think to uh, to this route here I will redirect to this route so that's my security check but if we do have a cart well then I want to continue you already know the steps with the old card and the new card right this pattern we use throughout this application and next I want to use stripe now I can do this by simply adding the import at the top here use stripe slash stripe this is important this line and then you can access all the stripe methods here basically now what does stripe offer me well I can set my API key remember on the front end in the checkout.js file we set this publishable key now on the back end we need to set the secret key and you can get the secret key from your account the account settings the API keys tab here and well I need to log in again just a little security matter and then here it is hidden and for in the video it is hidden it will be visible to you just copy this key go back to your app and then paste it in here now I'm not doing it right now I will do it later so that I don't have to blur this out all out in post-production that's all the reason but you may already copy in your key right now and then I will have a try catch block where I will try to make this charge so I will make try by using stripe create and then try to make this charge however how does this work let's go back to the documentation let's have a look at the API libraries and then here you can see we get the PHP page and you can check out the PHP API docs as the link says here to have a convenient way of learning how to make a charge so let's click on charges create a charge and on the right you see an example request now we already set the API key but now it's time to create the charge this part here now as you saw I already created stripe create I will now just copy that here the argument and array and pass this array to this stripe create method now of course amount shouldn't be 400 instead it should be card total price now here's an important catch though stripe will use cents as its default unit now since the default unit in our application however is well dollars I need to multiply it with 100 otherwise if it costs $40 in our app I would only charge 40 cents on stripe I'll set the currency to US dollar and regarding this token here this of course is just dummy data we need to use the token sent with the request this token stored in the hidden input field added through the checkout.js file so this token we got back from stripe when we validated the credit card information so here i will basically access my request input and then stripe token which is simply the name this hidden input field will have if you have a look at the checkout.js file you see that it has this name stripe token so that's all i'm doing here i'm accessing this token here and now the description set it to whatever you want i will name it test charge again this is freely settable by you of course in a real application you would probably set it to the username product id whatever whatever you like 
Since we have a try block here, I also need a catch block. Here I will get my exception, slash exception, no import needed here, just slash exception, built in PHP exception. And I want to basically show this exception. I will redirect to the checkout route again. And then I will redirect with a message, which I store in the error object. And then I want to print the, the error there. So, oops, no string, instead e get message. So just a message of a potential error I got here. Of course, here no arrow should be used, but a comma since we have multiple arguments here. And with that, I'm just using again this charge error div I set up earlier. And I'm now handling the case that the charge is not successful as well. Next, if, well, if I'm reaching this point, I'm not returning. So it seems like the charge was successful because I'm not in the catch block. Otherwise I would have left this function here, right? Next, I therefore want to forget my card, which basically means delete it from the session because we checked out. I don't want it to be there anymore. Now, of course, I'm not really storing the order in the database right now. That's something I'll add in the future because currently we would get the money, but we, we wouldn't do anything else. The customer probably wouldn't be too happy. But for now, I will simply clear the card from the session and then I will return a redirect to another route, let's say the product, oops, the product index route. So this index page with, let's say a success message. So with success, successfully purchased products like this. That could be a success message we show. Now, in order to show this message, I need to adjust my index page a little bit. So this index.blade.php file. There I will need to add something right after entering my content here before I'm looping through all the products. I want to enter a bootstrap row and then let's basically say call sm6, call md4, just some bootstrap styling, column positioning here again, call md offset four and call sm offset three, something like that. And I will create a new div here with an ID of charge error or let's say charge message, whatever you want. Class alert and alert success because it will show me some uh, success messages in the end. And then I will just print session get success here. But of course I only want to show this if well, if my session has the success uh, object inside of it. Otherwise, there's no reason to show this block here. So that allows me to print out the success message whenever we are successful. And now we're making this charge here. Now for me, it's time to enter my private key. And with that, we should be good to go and see if that all works. So I will reload my checkout page here. I still have a valid shopping cart. Now I will fill in my, my data here. Now regarding Stripe, I will go back to the other documentation here, to the very starting, getting started page here to just use that dummy data here, this dummy credit card number, which has the right amount of digits. Enter this here. Give it any valid expiration month and year, so in the future it should be, any free digit CVC here and click buy now. And create, call to undefined function controllers create. It doesn't like that, let's see what's wrong. Yeah, I definitely need an extra colon here. And I still got a problem here. I'm leaving this in the video because I think it might be helpful. The create method here is not available on the Stripe object here. Instead, it is available on Stripe slash charge. However, this wouldn't work too, because now I just need charge. Now, in order to use charge though, 
I need to import it and I need to import it from Stripe, stripe slash charge. So I do have two imports needed, stripe slash stripe and stripe slash charge. Oversolve that before, excuse me, but I think it's helpful to see this error here and to, well, see that you need to be careful and that we are using two different, um, well, pieces of the stripe package here. The overall stripe package to set the key and then the charge part of it to make the charge. So back to the application. If I now hit submit, we got the successful purchase. And if I reload the page here in my dashboard, the test dashboard, we should see, yes, before we had 20 euros in my case here, since I'm in Europe. And now, as you can see, we made an $18 purchase today, which I think makes sense since we bought two books, which each costed $10. And if you convert this to dollar to you euros, 18 euros sounds about right. So this is how you can charge with Stripe. As I said, currently we're not storing the order information. We're not able to really ship something. We're also doing this anonymous. Keep that in mind. The user is not logged in, which is one of the reasons why we're not storing the order information. So there is still room for improvement. But you saw how Stripe works and how to use it. And I hope this is useful. And now you might already try out implementing it with a locked in user instead of an anonymous one and actually storing the well ordered information in the database. But I will also do this in the next videos. See you there. Bye.